Aha. Uh-huh. Darren. Now, who could be? So should we give? Oh, should this... we give? Should we give him a ring? Yeah, let's uh, let's try and bring Darren into the fold here. Okay, let's get him on. D A R. Right. Right, we're ringing Darren now. Straight from one, straight from one to the other. Beautiful. Hi, Darren. You okay? Yeah. How's it going? Oh, it's going very well, thank you. Just let you know, you're on with myself, Rain. You're on with my co-host Patrick as well. Okay. Hey, nice what's happening, Darren? How's it going? Fantastic. Good to speak with you again, my man. Can you guys see me? I don't know. Uh, no, I'm we we good. we Skype haven't got the video. We've just got the audio, but we it's all right because we're just doing a pod podcast anyway, so we don't need any video. We're just going to focus on the audio. Okay. Cool. So we'll, we'll jump straight in. Then we'll obviously we'll we'll talk about uh, where we where we fir- were first introduced to you on the mainstream, which was obviously Tough Live. So what what was your experience of, of the Ultimate Fight Alive? Uh, the Ultimate Fighter Live. Yeah. Uh, I had a great experience with it. I actually miss being in that house, all secluded, and all you're doing is just eating and training. Uh, a lot of guys had trouble with not, not you know, knowing what was going outside, what was going on in the world outside of the house. Uh, but I, I took it in. I just, I was relaxed and nothing to worry about. No stressors. All you do is train and eat and sleep you know it was uh it was a great experience i would do it again definitely now you obviously had a, a background within martial arts because what right am i right saying that both your parents were, were into martial arts weren't they yes yes they actually met at a karate tournament and uh then a couple years later boom i'm i'm popped out and and uh doing the family business so like obviously growing up then there was that something you always did from a young age you were you were literally on the dojo on the mat straight from from when you were really young oh yeah i i remember going to fight like my mom fought professional as a kickboxer and boxer um when i was you know that age like really young and so i was always going to boxing matches and kickboxing matches my dad he worked uh a lot so he wasn't able to commit to competing a whole lot i mean he competed in like karate tournaments and stuff when he was younger but as far as like professional uh, kickboxing or boxing, uh, I, I wouldn't know about that. But he's trained a ton of guys and did a lot of seminars and and uh, and you know he, he's he, I would say he's a true mixed martial artist. Yeah, it, obviously. So it, it, it was it. Did you like growing up in that environment? Did you like growing up knowing that that's what you were going to go into? Uh, I, I never knew that that's what I was going to do. And I thought it was normal because, you know, I was doing martial arts all the time. I, you know, I, I didn't know what, what uh, other kids were doing. Like I never played video games when I was younger. I didn't start playing video games till I was in college. Uh, I'm, I'm terrible at any other sport other than combat sports. Like I don't know how to throw a ball, you know, when I was younger, uh, me and my dad would do mitt work and instead, you know, and other kids were playing catch with their, with their dad. Uh, I was doing mitt work, uh, you know, so I didn't, uh, I didn't experience a whole, whole lot of other things. I mean, I, I played t-ball when I was really young and I made the third base once, <laughs> never made it home, you know? Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's my upbringing. So looking at a little bit, obviously you pre ultimate fire you, you started fighting in 2009 you've, you've you've obviously got you've got quite a lot of fights in a short space of time uh, you've got a lot of victories as well have you got any favorite victories or any uh any, any ones that stood out to you my my ringside fight was uh was pretty epic uh it was 25 minutes of, of battling and i got to show a lot of my skills because you know the guy the guy came at me and i came at him and it wasn't a boring grappling match or anything like that. It was it was 25 minutes of basically kickboxing. So, and that was uh, that was in Montreal for uh, the ringside title, ringside MMA title at 155. I would say that was probably my my most exciting and, and fun match because I was in a different country. I'm in and I'm in Montreal. They speak French there. Nobody likes me. I was brought in to lose, and. I, I thought when the bell when the bell rang for that last round and, and the round was over, I thought I lost because I'm in a different country. I didn't knock him out. I didn't finish him. I didn't submit him. 
and I, you know, I thought that uh, if I didn't do that, then I wasn't going to win. So I got up. I, I felt like I completely dominated the whole fight. But being that I didn't finish them, I thought I lost because, you know, the hometown favorite kind of thing going on. Yeah. Uh, but when they raised my hand, I was surprised, like, oh, my gosh. And then they, the judges actually gave me, I think, four out of the five rounds. So I was, I was pretty happy about that. And I, I ended up getting some fans out there because when I, when I walked out, I was booed. And, you know, I, I love playing the bad guy part. But then when, I, when, I, uh, when the fight was over, the, you know, the crowd changed their mind. And, and you know, it, it, was, it was a good feeling. They obviously appreciated the the fact that you'd put in such a good fight for such a long time. How did you find fighting twenty five minutes? Was that, that was the first time you'd obviously fought twenty five minutes? I was uh I was in the best shape I've ever been in for that fight. Uh, and I actually in the fourth round, or no, in the going into the fifth round, one of my cornermen was like, "Hey, this is the last round, blah blah blah," and I'm like. No, it's not. I, I have completely lost track of what round it was and how long I was fighting. I actually got up, stood up, walked to the referee, and was like, what round is this? You know, because I, I totally, you know, lost track of what round I was in. The 25 minutes was was not bad. I mean, when you're in shape and you're ready to go, you're ready to go and fight forever, I guess. It's a hell of an achievement, I think, to fight for 25 minutes. Because, I mean, you see it even, like, in, in the UFC, you see guys that, you know, struggle to fight for 15 minutes sometimes. So to fight for 25 minutes, it's, it must have, it's going to obviously hold you in, in good stead. We'll talk a little bit about the Ultimate Fighter. We've, we've, we've actually spoke to quite a few guys from the house, which we've obviously been pleased with. And one of the questions, funny enough, I always ask them, is if they saw what happened between you and Chris Tickle. So, obviously, I don't need to ask you if you saw it, because obviously you were involved. So what was, what was your take on the incident between yourself and Chris Tickle in the house? I haven't actually watched any of the the videos from the show, yeah. But um, me and Tickle, we both goof, goofed around a lot, like on each, uh, you know, with the, each other's team and stuff. Uh, in the beginning of the show, we set some guidelines on like pranks and stuff like that, like you know, you don't mess with anybody's personal stuff, like just things of that matter. And my history, uh, like in college and everything. Like, I was, like, the person that you did not want to wake up when he was sleeping. And that was that was the only thing, like, it, there was no beef between me and him. Like, we're, you know, I mean, we're not, like, best friends or anything, but I don't have nothing against him. And it was just the wrong time. When you're in the house, all you're thinking about is fighting. That's all you do. You don't get to watch TV or anything. So me being asleep, taking a nap, out cold, Getting hit with a water bottle in the nuts, waking me up, and as soon as I woke up, I wasn't still like up, you know, like frame of mind. I was reacting, just like, just like when you fight. And he was the first person I seen. I don't even know if he threw it, but he was the first person I seen standing out my door laughing, and I just lit a couple rip off, because it's just reaction. And then I want to say Cristiano broke us up. And, uh, you know, and from there, you know, he was, he had some words, I had some words, but I don't think, I don't think, uh, it changed anything as far as, uh, like if I was going to fight him in the finale or not, I'm pretty sure me and him were mashed up anyway. And, you know, Dana White was like, you get what you, what you ask for, you're fighting, you know, Chris Tickle. So, um, but as far as, as far as that, you know, it's, uh. It happens, you know. We that's all we do all day. We fight, we train. So that's that's what reaction you're gonna get. Yeah. Am I am I uh, like remorseful or or like in the house? I there was no way they were gonna kick me out of the house. Like we have a week left. Nobody got hurt, and you know, there's there's a lot of fights that have happened pre in previous seasons that nobody knows about. Because they just don't have time to put that that into the the season, so it's it's not that big of a deal, I guess. No, I think it was it was it was played down. I don't think it, like you say, no one was hurt. I think that was the main thing. And what was it like fighting him in the finale? Do, do you think it added to the fight because of what happened in the house? Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, me and him didn't have any beef against each other. Uh, you know, I apologized to him. He's you know he was okay with it. Uh, but in in the in the finale. 
you know, Chris is a tough guy. And, you know, uh, he doesn't, he's not the same level of fighter I am. And the only way that he was going to be able to beat me is if he pressured me a lot. And, like, if you didn't, if you don't let me set up anything, if, if you sit back and, and play the the game, then I'm going to tear you apart because I'm really good at picking people apart. But if you make it almost like a street fight, uh, and that's that's kind of what he did, he you know, he, so much pressure, um, then he has a better chance. That's That's what he thought, and that's how he came at me in the fight. Like, there was no... There was no uh, checking each other's timing. There was no, nothing like that. There was no filling each other out. He came right at me in the fight. And when you have two people that that can that can fight like that, you know, two guys going at it, it's who has the more skills that's going to win. And I definitely have a better wrestling background than him. So there was no space to to strike. Like as soon as he he just charged in at me. So you know there was no kicks. There was no no uh, setting punches up or anything like that. So as soon as he came in, boom, inside trip. I think I took him down like four or five times with the same takedown. Um, and then just played on top. I was actually, there was one point in the fight where I was laughing at myself because I was, I was in his guard or I was in his half guard and I covered his mouth and I reached up and I pinched his nose. <laughs> so like he, he couldn't breathe, but it was just because I was closing all his, his orifices or whatever, yeah. but... It was it was a good fight. I wish I could have finished it. I I never really turned on because he was pressuring me so much, but you know I won, he lost, so that's good. Was there any uh any fighters in the house that you didn't get on with? Because it seemed like quite a good atmosphere in the house. As far as as far as my team, uh, the favorite team, I got along with everybody. We got pretty close. We still all talk. Uh, I went and spent a couple of weeks with, uh, with John Kofer That's out. That's out in. Uh, he's out in at Uriah Faber's camp in Sacramento, California. Hung out with him for a little bit. I seen a, uh, some of the guys at at the uh, the summit. We all hung out at the UFC summit. But as far as the other team, they we, there was just no no like great friendships with the with uh, the cruise team. Like they they stayed by themselves. They I, it almost feels like they never even got close to them like each other. Yeah. A lot of the guys, they would never turn off, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the house, like, okay, we're just hanging out, but still, every time they walk into a room with you or whatever, their chest was high, they're, they're you know, just not not as, like, opening, open to a friendship, I guess you'd say. Not, like, a close friendship. They would never, they always thought, like, the competition's going on, and, you know, they got to act tough all the time. Uh, some of the guys... Once they lost, they kind of opened up a little bit, but not not really. What was it like as well training with uh, Uriah Faber and obviously some of the big names that he brought in from his camp? Uriah Faber and the Alpha Male team, the, the biggest thing that I took from them is the their mentality. They That team has the, the, the most mentally tough guys I've ever seen before. You know, And I like how they keep... They keep things fun in their training, but when it's time to work, they work, and everything is positive. There's no negativity in that team whatsoever. You know, not instead of like you know saying, "Hey, you know, you suck at this. You need to, you know, you need to go to boxing more." It's, "Hey, man, let's you know, let's work on your boxing. Let's get it real good." Da 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 da. And just having that mentality makes the world a difference. Well, I know uh, Patrick's uh, eager to go. So I'm going to let Patrick jump in. You ready to go, Patrick? Oh. Yo, yo, Patrick. <laughs> Where's he gone? Uh, oh, terribly sorry. I'm I'm here. Um, hey, sorry about that. Um, Darren, I know you got a class you're going to teach here shortly. Um, you want to shout out your gym and tell us where and what you'll be teaching today? Well, tonight I'm teaching at the uh, FC Fitness in Waterford. Uh, I'm teaching mixed martial arts. The class that I teach, it's it's basically just fighters that come. There's no, like, normal people, I guess you'd say. But, uh, you know, I basically run a pro practice there. We warm up, we drill, and then we bang. We beat the shit out of each other. It's a, it's a great time. There you go. Sounds like fun. 
Now, um, let's let's talk about a little bit about UFC 151. Obviously, you were scheduled to go on there. You were going to be fighting Henry Martinez. And uh, we didn't even know this when we booked the interview, but it was just announced, uh, I believe it was, what, Monday, that your fight has been moved to the UFC on Fox 5 card? Yeah, I, yeah, I so, want to say that that's uh, December 8th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, December 8th. Yeah, now, it's, um, it's to change. Like, uh, you know, I got ready for this fight for UFC 151. I'm in shape. Uh, you know, I, I spent quite a bit of money getting ready for it, going out to California from Michigan, uh, you know, not teaching, not training guys so I can concentrate on myself, uh, you know, eating healthy and, and, you know, vitamins and everything like that. I spent quite a bit of money getting ready for this fight. And it sucks because, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get that back. And now I have to, uh, you know, go do some extra things to to make money, pay my bills, and, and, you know, afford to get ready for this next fight. Yeah, that's rough. You haven't heard anything uh, from the UFC about uh, potentially, you know, sliding a little bonus, maybe a little pay advance your way, nothing like that? Uh, not that I know of. I, people are talking about how in Nevada, the law is if, uh, the promoter cancels the show. They have to put you on the immediately next show, and if they don't, then they have to pay you your show money. I don't know if that's that's the that's what I keep hearing from everybody, especially online. But uh, I haven't really checked into it to see if that's what's going to happen. The UFC is a good company. It's the best company to fight for, and they take care of their fighters. I expect them to hook me up or you know compensate me somehow. I mean, they're. They're the, t they're the top place to fight for, and, you know, they got us medical insurance and everything, so, you know, I have my faith in them. Yeah, absolutely. We've we've seen in the past the UFC, they, they like to take care of their guys, and like you said, especially with the insurance, and, uh, you know, I know they're pretty good with the the unspoken bonuses, so right. that's cool. I'm sure I'm sure they'll, they'll have you all set. Um, now speaking of your next fight, like we said, Henry Martinez, you're uh, you're rescheduled to take him on. Uh, are there any holes in his game you notice you're looking to exploit? Talking about Henry? Yeah. Um, I would say that you know he's he's a grappler, he's a wrestler, he's got a black belt in jujitsu. He wants to get it to the ground, and that's uh, you know that's obvious. Uh, yeah. I've, you know, I wrestled in college. I got a, a great background as far as wrestling. I just need to, when I'm doing my striking, I need to be conscious of the takedown. Not not afraid of it, but conscious of it. And, you know, so much, too much pressure, he'll be able to get me on the ground. But if I lax a little bit, be cautious about it, and pick my shots, he's not going to have a good time on his feet. Yeah, there you go. Um, now let's let's go back a little bit. I uh, I want to talk about your fight against Brad Cardinal. Um, I think that was maybe maybe your tenth fight or something like that. And you came out to Hulk Hogan's old WWE theme music, uh, which is a great move, by the way. And I just wanted to ask, did you get to pick that out? And does the UFC Lost let you pick your walk? You got me now. You there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't uh I didn't get half that uh that question. Oh, sorry about that. Um yeah, I was just talking about the the Brad Cardinal fight. You came out to Hulk Hogan's old uh wrestling music. And uh I wanted to ask if you would pick that out and also in the UFC, do they let you pick out your walkout music I, I, or is it like I, I heard the the question about the wrestling music, but uh you, you got cut off after that. I didn't hear after that. Uh, did you get to did you get to pick that and does the oh, UFC yeah. does, does the UFC <laughs> Sorry about that. Go for it. No, no, my bad. Okay, as as far as that that song, I've come out to that many times, especially when when I'm fighting in Canada. I've got quite a bit of fights in Canada. Um, I requested that song for this upcoming fight, UFC 151. That's the song that I was going to come out to. 
uh, it it pumps me up. I I love that song and and uh, you know, Real American. It's it's a uh, it's a classic, and I think it's an honor to come out to it. Um, in Canada, people were hating me because I came out to it, but it fits the profile. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm an American coming over to Canada, fighting a Canadian, and it just puts on it's it puts out for a good show. Yeah, it really does, and and I noticed in that fight, like uh, the other fight you discussed with Ray, walking out the the Canadian crowd might not have been too receptive at the beginning, but uh, you put on a great fight um, with that fight. I think I saw you you were throwing spinning jump kicks, uh, a spinning heel kick in there maybe. Um, Really exciting fight, and they were definitely cheering for you at the end. So that's got to be, uh, got to feel good. Oh yeah, it's a, uh, I love putting on a show, and that's what this sport's all about. It's it's a spectator sport, and you got to be entertaining. Yeah, and that you certainly are. And uh, another real entertaining fight, uh, I thought was your MMA debut. Uh, you fought Ricky Stetner in King of the Cage. And um, you knocked him out first round, spinning back fist, very clean. And um, I want to ask you, though, before that spinning back fist hit, um, you had Stetner's back, and the ref stood you guys up. Did that make you feel like a little more uh, urgent to go for the finish on the feet? No, no. I actually, uh, I don't know if you've seen the whole video, but I took him down a few times, and being my debut, I didn't want to finish it on the ground. I didn't want to get a submission or or a TKO or anything like that. I felt like I could have finished him quite a few times. I just didn't go for it. I wanted to get a knockout. I wanted to see my sure dog record say 100% knockout rate, and that's <laughs> that's what I was going for. Yeah, well, and you certainly got off to a good start right there. You, uh, gosh, you put him out clean. And it just it looked like the ref maybe just wasn't on top of his game i mean he stood you up when he when you had his back so maybe you know that ended up letting you do what you wanted but um then even after you connected with the spinning back fist like he looked just completely out and the ref like didn't even stop it it looked like uh you know you just gave him one more to put the finishing touches on it and he he was right. out what, cold what happened was is it went because uh, he he tried taking me down uh, and ultimately i took his back and I, lo I just locked one of his hands down, and I basically looked at the ref like, hey, you know, stand us up. Like, I don't want to be here. And uh, after, you know, being – not doing anything, he stood us up. Uh, after I hit him with the back fist, I knew he was out. Like, it hit like a baseball bat. He's out. <laughs> I put my hands up. What happened was is Ricky – his body tensed up, and his head popped off the mat. Like, he was out. Like, he doesn't remember – I talked to him after the fight. He doesn't remember the rest of the week. Uh, oh, man. But he was out, and the ref – like, if you see his feet, like, when I hit him again, the ref didn't stop because his head popped up. It, like, his body tensed up. Um, and, you know, my corner's like, hey, hit him again. So I gave him another one, and his, like, body flops like like he's, like, like a rag doll or something like that. It was kind of gross looking, I guess. But, uh, you know <laughs> – I guess the ref is trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, trying to let him come back. Uh, you you got to know when the guy's about to get hurt or not. You know, that's the ref's job is to stop it. So, and and that show was, uh, was at an Indian resort. There's no commission. You know, the referees don't have to be certified. So you just got to be careful. You know, it was my pro debut. I'm not fighting on a big card or anywhere like that. Uh at the time, I was 0-0, and I think he was 2-0. and So it was a fair fight. It's not like I was fighting, uh, you know, at that, you know, when you're up and coming, like, you're not going to fight a bunch of studs. You know, I, it was a it was a fair fight. He was he had two fights. I had zero fights as far as pro fights. So, um, I actually don't think he's fighting anymore. I don't know what's going on with his career, but, yeah. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, but yeah, definitely a fair fight and uh it definitely a good fight as well. And like you said, you know, yeah. when you're when you're O and O fighting a guy who's two and O, I mean, and getting the win, yeah, well, that's that a lot better Did than I lose you again? Yep. Oh, oh. I'm here. Okay. Am I coming in? Yep, 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 you're good. You're good. 
All right, yeah, but yeah, it definitely looks a lot better uh, beating a guy who's two and zero in your debut than say like a guy who's zero and six or something like that. So right, definitely right. not a, not an easy, not necessarily an easy test for your debut right. either. Well, um, hey, I know, I know, like you said, you got the class coming up, so we don't want to take up too much of your time. But um, if you want to shout out your website or your Twitter, or your Facebook, uh, let everyone know how we can keep up, keep in touch with you and. Uh, Follow the world yep. of the Detroit uh, Superstar. I'll, let me thank uh, all my my uh, Twitter and Facebook friends for uh, supporting me on there and and uh, motivating me to train and everything like that. Let me thank um, Fight Club Proving Grounds in Waterford, Michigan, and East West Martial Arts in Canton. I would say world's best boxing in Detroit. Keeping my hands my hands right. Uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Well, thank you very oh, much. Yeah. Let me uh, let me think the fight nerd and watch for my my up and coming zombie videos. How to how to uh, how to kill zombies with Darren Crookshank. Where can we get those videos, Darren? They're at the the fight nerd dot com. Cool. We'll 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 keep a look out for them. And where, are they already up or that you you're going to be putting them up? Uh, well, I'm going to be demonstrating on uh, how to kill zombies. Each episode, I'm going to have a different method on how to kill a zombie and and uh, show you just my favorite ways. Brilliant. Well, we'll look forward to them. We'll get I am those. an amateur zombie hunter. <laughs> we'll get some of those links posted as well. We'll look out for them. Yep. yep. Well, thank you very much for being on the show, Darren. All right. Thanks. Uh, and uh, I, I hear a, a, like an English accent. You know, you know Andy Ogle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had him on a show a couple of weeks ago. Ogle is my my man. He's my brother. He's my English brother. I'm going to see him fight in Nottingham soon. Yeah, we uh we got along really well in, in the in the house. Yeah, he's a he's a good guy. He was he, he did the UK proud. Yep, yep, and uh, I want to wish him good luck on his upcoming fight in Nottingham. Yeah, I, I've got his number. I'll send him a message saying you wished him luck for his fight. But uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks, Darren. And, uh, if you ever want me to back, uh, come back on the show, as long as I got the time, I'll, I'll definitely come on. Yeah, we'll get, definitely get you back on again. We've got you on Skype now, so we'll keep you added on, and then we'll, we'll arrange you to come back on, maybe just before your fight in December. What did you say? Yeah, or perhaps maybe we'll have to have you back on in December, or uh, maybe when you. the Walking Dead premieres. We'll, sorry, we'll get you on just before your fight in December. Awesome. Sounds great. Cool. I'll All talk right, to you guys later. Bye. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Take care. Yep. Right, that was Darren Crookshank. He was uh, I couldn't I couldn't work out if he was joking or not about the zombies. <laughs> yes, well, you know his his Twitter page lists him as an amateur zombie hunter. Okay. Um, so I think that's a uh, we have to try some and find of the fun those Darren likes. Then. Yeah, I'd seen some some funny Twitter pictures uh, Darren has with, you know, he's he's got his guns out, you know, he's looking like he's on the zombie hunt and. Uh, Hey, always, always good fun. The zombies are really uh, making a comeback, especially with that show, The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, we get that over here as well.